Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Talking Heads. I'm Michael Mann. Joining me today, Mr. Tommy Bridewell. Thank you. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. Are you? Sun shining. What could be better? Sun shining. We've got, we've got this as well. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, no. Um, and a runway. Yeah. With very loud cars on. But no, uh, yeah, no, all good. Very keep them wowing, trying to keep busy and out of trouble is the R bit. No, I'm all right. But um, yeah, nice to, nice to see, see a motorbike again, really. It's going to be nice to ride one, I think, as well. Yeah, it's been, um, it's been a tough, oddly, it's been a tough time with um, knowing what's happening. It's only of recent that it, we've got an idea of when racing is going to resume that I can now turn my focus to my training. I find it very hard that in, it's like a triathlete, for example, will go, right, I've got a triathlon on that date. So three months before they train, so on and so on. And it's like a boxer. A boxer doesn't train all year, all every year for any fight. They're like, go right, I'm fighting on that date. So two months before is when I start my training camp. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit easier. Now I have an inkling of the, the dates that we can, um, we can now get the, get the training back on the road, which I have been, but more specific really you don't look like you've looked put on a pound <laughs> yeah. so look, listen we're, we're coming i won't say to the ward towards the end of lockdown but at least there's a goal of focus you've already mentioned it we know when the first round of bsb is going to be but how has lockdown treated you has it been a, a case of my, no one's known anything have no. they we don't, we don't have a focus we don't have an idea of when it's going to end so it's all been about ticking along and keeping yourself safe yeah but how, how has it how has it been for you have you been busy yeah yeah oddly um i i uh enjoy property so weirdly i love and live for racing motorbikes but outside of racing i used to work at the garage for dad and so on and but property property really interests me anyway cut a long story short i bought a house um to renovate just at christmas and it was gonna be a a year renovation kind of scenario, as and when I can, between races and so on and so on, and just do bit by bit. And then the lockdown happened. And I can remember when, when I got an inkling that the lockdown was gonna happen, I went up the local builders merchants and me, and me little tipper and just filled the thing to the brim, like, you know, and they were like, why are you buying so much? And it's probably the first time I've got something right where I was like, well, if everything gets locked down and you don't open, I need stuff to carry on with. Yeah, luckily, the house is pretty much complete and now we're about a month and a half or two months away from from starting racing so it's um for me it's not been all too bad so it's worked in your favor really you've, you've yeah. almost been given a bit of time off to complete a project you wanted to do yeah i probably shouldn't say that because of the the world crisis but it's probably not been a bad thing for me um but in the same aspects it would also have been much more preferred to have been out fighting in in racing a motorbike in hopefully winning races yeah sure well, look, I, I'm, I'm i'm always quite an optimist about these things and every cloud has a silver lining so the the horrificness of this pandemic has has, has given opportunity i think to a lot of yeah. us for doing different things so um yeah. but including your chocolate brownie making skills yeah <laughs> yeah that's when you know i was at home bored when the stacy said my wife said to me what are you doing and i was like ah i was looking at Mary, I actually got it wrong the other day. Mary Berry, uh, she's got a Mary Berry cookbook thing. So I was looking at it, I was like, God, bloody hell, that looks nice. Oh, I'm going to try and make some. So I had a go at making chocolate brownies, but they were like eating the sole off your shoe. They were that dry. <laughs> <laughs> that dry. Yeah, you could walk, you could walk 10 mile on them. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that for her. You stick to bricks and mortar. Yeah, yeah, and ride the bikes. During lockdown, you mentioned it already. Have you been keeping fit, keeping training? As it yeah, began? it's actually, weirdly, normally my, my day is I'll, I'll get up and I'll go training first thing before I do anything. Then I'll come back, breakfast, walk the dogs, then tinker around whatever I'm going to do for the day. Then three o'clock, go training again. So your, your day is train, train, walk the dogs, yeah. Um, where now it's get up, walk the dogs, go and renovate a house, pl amble plasterboard up and down stairs all day, then come back and I'm like, oh, I've got to go training. But I'm absolutely exhausted before I start. So I feel like that's where I've managed to keep quite, quite fit really, purely because of being able to sort of renovate this house um, and it's, it's kept me going. So yeah, it's not been all too bad. And what about the bike? 
for this year? Has much changed? You obviously had, you've had the Monte Blanco test, you had the Jerez test. That seemed to go well for you. Um, Monte Blanco was, was good because if I'm honest, I, um, there's a few areas on the track that scare me a little bit. So I, I never really fully commit when I'm riding now. I'm never like, right now, let's really go at it. There's a lot more time I feel like in me and the bike there. So to end up fastest uh, there was, was a strong start. Jerez, I, I'd be lying if I wasn't a little bit disappointed because I set a target for myself of what kind of lap time I wanted to achieve. Um, and I didn't achieve it uh, because we had a few issues with the bike there um, and we just couldn't get on top of them if I'm, if I'm gonna be 100% honest. But as far as that, them two tests go, it, they were more than a success. And what was also nice for, for me and the team is that bike we rolled out on was what we finished with last year. Yeah. Nothing had changed, um, but the nice thing, oddly, after it is that's when we got the new engine spec, that's when we got the new exhaust, that's when we got the new swing and arm. So we've not even kind of showed our hand. And a specific part on the bike we've, we've recently done has made a, a big, big, big difference so I'm yeah quite eager to to now actually try it and see see if it it helps on a certain area where where perhaps we were certainly not weak but where we could have improved keeping your cars close to your chest there, yeah, you? I know yeah. I was waiting for the comeback of trying to get it out no it's, it's nothing it's nothing that under hat it's just you know just it's developing that's all it is every team's going to do the same thing they always want to get better yeah exactly yeah and, and you could argue that from the outset the Ducati was dominant last year you had three strong riders on it but it's like anything uh, my team PBM Ducati every other manufacturer every other team's always still trying to be the best or, or to catch the best and it's then the pressure is it's down for us to to stay that one step ahead and if we don't continue developing and continue improving, they will catch us. It's that simple. You know, you've got the new Yamaha, that's proven in World of Superbikes at Phillip Island, that's strong out the blocks. I know Kawasaki have got a few bits, you know, there's the BMWs, you know, probably gonna be a bit stronger, so. And Honda. And Honda, yeah, bar the recall. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so you've got uh, another new bike there, so it'd be an interesting one. You were talking earlier on uh, off camera about the how well the wings work, and uh, I guess my question is, with the V4R finishing first, second, and third, people are naturally going to assume that it's clearly the best bike. Mm. What do you say to the to the haters who think you know you only finished third because of the bike? You, you try and ride it as fast as I can. Then <laughs> I feel that people will turn around and go, "Oh, you only you had your best season in BSB because you were riding a Ducati." Cool, no problem. But that doesn't then hide the fact that I'm the lap record holder at Donington, I'm the lap record holder at Alton. The lap record at Alton is faster than most people's one out bite the screen lap in qualifying and I did it in a race. I won at Alton Park. If I, if I just chuck that all in the hat and then to also back myself up and go, well, Scott and Josh beat me in the championship, yes, 100%. But if you look at the, the ratios, I would all, normally always beat one of them. So if Scott beat me, I'd beat Josh. Or if Josh beat me, I'd beat Scott. So I found that I was more of the, in the middle of, of the two PBM bikes a little bit. And if they were one and two, and I was sixth, seventh, and I was a second lap off them, I'd say fair enough. But the bottom line is, is I went toe to toe with the best team arguably in BSB with no, no um, restraints on their budget, direct factory support. So if anything, I was the one on the back foot that could still match them. So for the haters, they can stick that in their pipe and smoke it. Do you feel as though the bikes brought you on as a rider? Has it given you much more confidence? The team has, yeah, no, the team has. I've worked at all my career trying to find a team as driven, focused and passionate about racing a motorbike as me. And I almost give up with trying to find that because I almost felt you know, it's, not, it's not possible. You know, people don't share the same in, in sort of drive as me in it. And then luckily I joined up with Motor Rapido and found that they were a 
small bike shop that go racing because they want to go racing for no other reasons and technically are so far ahead it, than, than any other team I've ever worked with. Um, it inspires you knowing that you've got a team that give you give back exactly what I put in. And that, that is genuinely all down to the success we had, you know, in 2019. You said earlier on about um, wanting to stick with the Ducati. Yeah, yeah. You don't ever want to ride another bike or another manufacturer just just, be, because of the way in which Ducati portray yeah, themselves. I would struggle, I must be brutally honest, because I always am, I probably would struggle to find the enthusiasm right now to ride another manufacturer. Purely for the fact is, one, the way my team works, and they're obviously Ducati, mm -hmm. two, the way Ducati as a manufacturer work, and three, the way out of all the manufacturers I worked for, uh, uh, rode for, Ducati, the top, top wigs, Gigi, you know, Paolo, all of them know you by name. They can tell you exactly where I finished at Alton in race one, race two, race three. I done Suzuka, yeah, 18 it actually was, and I finished fourth there. We were the top Suzuki. We beat Yoshimura. I didn't see one person from Suzuki come and say, well done, like, you know. Not that I'm saying it's a dig at Suzuki, but I'm just a bit like, their focus is probably on the roads, and I get that. When I mean roads, as in like a, a road bike. Mm -hmm. Ducati, I went to Le Mans at the Grand Prix, you know, in their passion for racing, again, it goes back to me saying I struggled to find a team that had the same passion as I do. But Ducati are like that manufacturer. You know, I never had a, a manufacturer is passionate about racing, probably more so than selling road bikes as Ducati are. And I think the combination of me, Ducati and Motor Rapido is, is genuinely for me as a rider for confidence and so on is just an absolute match made in heaven. So yeah, ask a long winded way of, of, of your, of your um, question is, is mm, it'd have to be a good deal. <laughs> so Ducati's passion gives you the fuel for success. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Their, their, their philosophy of, of making the best possible motorbike for, for racing and reading the rule book and making the rule book to the bike's advantage. No other manufacturer do that, you know, they, they, and that's, that's it. And I would argue, I would argue that with, with most people. We've seen the V4R um, in World Superbikes uh, last year with uh, Bautista going very successfully early on in the season and, and, and and Scott and Chaz have had a, a, an outing already this year with uh, three races. Are you surprised at the way that Scott's been able to handle the, the V4 in, in World Superbike at, at spec? No, because it's like people sort of say about Scott in BSB, come he, and, he, and he won, he won a good amount of races and then he won the championship, 100%. Yes, he probably um, done a lot better job than a lot of people thought he would. But you've got to remember, it, it, Scott's been brought up, for example, in, in Grand Prix. In Grand Prix, there's a certain pedigree they seem to breed, let's say. It's not your average motorbike rider. So for Scott to come back to BSB, or come to BSB, he has had to be able to adapt fast, which he did. So for him to then go to World Superbikes again, he had to adapt fast, but he probably felt a lot more at home. When I rode the Go 11 bike last year, Ducati was saying to me that they have more parameters and more electrical stuff they can mess about with than what they do in Grand Prix. Um, so I think to be fair to, to Scott, I do think that he is Ducati's um, best hope at the minute of fighting for the World Superbike Championship. Um, and yeah, I think they, they probably have a good chance of doing that. Speaking of worlds, is that unfinished business for you or if you, you're happy to duck in and duck out when you're required? Yeah, I like the ducking and diving <laughs> in racing. Um, Probably I got to a point where I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm, you know, if it's my, you know, main desire now, um, where now I am more like, do you know, I would like to have a good shot at, at um, World Superbikes. I love BSB. I love everything about it. I love the way the rules are. And that was almost my argument with, not argument, but my, I would love to see a collaboration with World Superbikes and BSB better because then it would allow for someone like me to not necessarily do all the World Superbikes, mm -hmm. but 
it would allow me and my team to go, do you know what, we're going to do BSB 12 rounds, for example, on a normal year, and then we're going to do, we're going to get some sponsors and do three or four World Superbike wildcards, Haref in Imola's and all that sort of European stuff. And I just wish the rules would allow us to be able to do that in a more competitive way. Unfortunately, they don't really. Um, and for me to then be competitive in World Superbikes, you, you need to be on a World Superbike spec bike. So I would love, I must be honest, like that is probably my focus in, in desire to, to go to World Superbikes. It's trying to, to twist Wilf, Wilf's arm to say, come on, let's have a, have a go at it. What are the chances? <laughs> I don't know. Let's see how this season goes. Yeah, right? uh, it depends, uh, depends what mood he's in. No, if I, um, I'll buy him a nice bottle of red wine or something. And then, <laughs> Is that what it takes? Yeah, and then ask him and then uh, try and get him to talk into it. Yeah, try and get him. But I don't know. I say we're, we're see. Our focus at the, at the minute is is BSB for, for 2020. Um, and then just take it from there. And is it the same answer then? We, you mentioned Endurance World Championship earlier with uh, Suzuka specifically. You've, you've done Suzuka before. Is that something you'd, you'd like to do again, perhaps with Ducati even? Yeah, 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 no, for definite. Um, it's something that we're working on. Um, and World Endurance, I actually enjoy. Uh, albeit I've not done a 24 hour and a lot of people are like, oh, it's hard. But um, Suzuka is a very sort of prestigious race. For other manufacturers I've done it for, it's the one time that they actually go, cool, racing is amazing sort of thing. Um, oddly, probably for Ducati, just because they're probably Italian, it, it's maybe not as as crucial for them. But um, yeah, it's something we're, we're sort of trying to get ironed out to do Suzuka in, in potentially Sepang um, this year. Right, good stuff. How be interesting. Yeah. Sepang, blimey. Yeah. If you're lucky, you get Suzuka on not such a hot, humid, day that's when you're very lucky um but you're still talking you know near wanting to pass out before you even get on the bike so last year i done it i went out at 70 71 kilograms i think and come in after a 50 minute stint at like 67.8 or something like you know and that's just one stint the hard bit about endurance is refueling fast enough to be able to go and do that again 50 minutes later, like you know, and then do that four times. Because last year it was only me and me and Brad Ray doing it as a two rider team. So it's not an easy, not an easy race. Hardcore. All right, let's talk about the Bennett's British Superbike oh. Championship 2020. Yeah. <laughs> so now we know the the schedule. We know we know the plan. Are there um, circuits that you would have hoped for on the on the calendar? Quadruple header at Alton Park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No uh, circuits I would have hoped for. No, they're all they're all on there. Um, because it is obviously a, a, a reduced calendar, um, the circuits that I probably would have opted against would have been Knock Hill, because mm -hmm. it's 450 miles from my house. It's a very long drive, and it's not the easiest circuit for me. Um, I've probably been vocal about whether superbikes have outgrown it. I must be brutally honest. I had an engine blow up on a bike once in the turn one, um, and it's probably the one time where I've actually thought, Christ, I had to jump off the bike at like 150 mile an hour and there's, yeah. Thruxton, unfortunately, it, it pains me to say, uh, because it's 20 minutes up the road and the, the support in following I get there is so, so mega, but it's just never clicked for me, never clicked. Which is strange because a lot of the riders like the Fruxton. Yeah, don't they? I know, I know. I don't know what it is for me in Fruxton. It's just never quite clicked. So that's off the calendar. Assen, I love. You know, every rider does. Um, so that is a shame that it's not on the calendar. But obviously, with with the you know quarantine business, it's understandable. So yeah, it brings us back to the actual calendar of um, of it of sort of BSB this year is sort of looking looking good for us really. So most likely the championship is going to be run behind closed doors or, or certainly with limited spectators. How do you, how do you feel about that? Does it, does it, yeah. do, you, you talked about having a good following at Thruxton, does that, that clearly gives you a, a buzz. Yeah, no, it, it's a shame. I must be honest, it is a big shame. But I, I expect if you said to, if you took a, a percentage of, um, of followers and spectators, right, you can have racing on TV or we, we don't go racing um, at all. They 
but you can't go to the circuit sort of thing, they probably say, well, look, it's better than nothing. We, we sit at home and watch it sort of thing. So it'd just probably be quite, um, probably quite an eerie feeling, I reckon. Just it's odd because you, you do the race, you, all, your, all your focus on is, you know, looking ahead sort of thing. You don't hear, you don't see, you don't, nothing. Nothing's in my mind. And then at the end of it, you then wave into the spectators in thinking, God, look at all the people there sort of thing. So I don't know. I think my natural instinct will be at the end of the race still, still wave. going around waving to, <laughs> to no one. But um, Just don't throw your boots over the fence because no, no exactly. one's going to be there. Oh, don't, trust me, I'll run after and get them after. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, I, I do hope, I do hope that in some form we can get a, a number of spectators. I must be honest because it's what, it's what our sport's about when... When you look at it, we we all race motorbikes um, to put on a show. At the end of the day, well, motorsport is to put on a show. So, yeah, hopefully um, we can can put on that show. It, it must be said that you and Josh Brooks are surely going to start as uh, as a season start the season as favourites. Uh, you you guys get on well. You've raced uh, enough years with him, enough races with him, that far apart. Yeah. Are there weaknesses? Are there, can you exploit him? Are you? I think that kind of boils a little bit back down to. Um, my the team uh, scenario where the PBM last year had a bit more resources, a bit more budget and a bit more support to allow them to always be that tiny bit ahead. You know, they get the swinging arm, a new swinging arm that maybe makes 0.3 of a second better at the circuit. They get it a round or two rounds before us. So we were always kind of chasing a bit, whereas now, I feel like we've had a year under our belt. We understand for, for me and the team what is going to be a benefit and we can now go on our own way. Um, and again, that's where I said back to the new stuff on the bike, I feel like it uh, uh, get us out the blocks fast. But yeah, Josh is going to be a headache for definite and it's finding a way of beating him. I know I know I can as a rider beat him for from self confidence. I beat him on the Yamaha when we were on identical uh, equal machinery. I beat him. Um, so I know I can beat him as a rider. He's got a very good backing and so have I. But like I say, last year I felt like maybe they just had the edge. I don't feel like they have any more because they've they've lost, in my opinion, one of the, the main kingpins in that garage. That, that brought the, a, a big chunk of, of wealth behind it as such. Um, he's now gone with Scott to, to World Superbikes. So I feel like if it was a straight out fight, technically between team to team, my team is, is stronger. I think we'll, we'll, we'll see that, not quite immediately, but I think maybe after two or three rounds, I, I would like my vision and my outlook is that we'll be the ones to then start taking that stride forward and it, I have to say that because one I take I genuinely believe it and I know it will be the case um, and two I have that much confidence in the team that I, I feel you know we will do it. And what about uh, other competitors for this year like part of the attraction I think of BSB is the fact that we know that almost anyone can win it or, and win yeah. a race or, or, or at least get on pole position so there's, yeah. there's, there's been a few yeah. A few uh, riders switching teams. There've been a few new guys and, and some young guns coming in too, which is great. Yeah. Um, you know, Ryan Vickers has had a year and he's he's, he's been quick pre-season. We've got, like you said earlier, new R1, BMW have had an extra year of development. They've got some young guns in their team. Brand yeah. new Honda. Who's who's going to be running you close? It's a tricky one, really, because like you say, there's there's riders and certain candidates that, like you said, Ryan Vickers, for example, um, has had his first year on it and now he was strong out in, in testing. Um, so maybe he might be the, the one to, to put the fight to us. But the bottom line is, I don't discount any of my competitors. It's the worst thing you can do as a rider. Um, I don't expect a fight just between me and Josh Brooks because we're both on Ducatis and we were strong last year. The chances are we'll go to there and it'll be like, oh, bloody hell, we've got the Yamaha now, we've got the Kawasaki and so on and so on. There's always there's always that next competitor. That, like you said, really, that's what makes BSB that, that almost that unknown, really. If you could tell me, yes, on paper, if you said, right, who's, who's your top three um, strongest riders going into BSB 2020, then you'd say 
probably, I would say, myself, Josh Brooks, and maybe you perhaps put Danny Buchan. Um, but then on that other side, you've, like you say, you've got the new Hondas, and so on and so on and so on. So genuinely, it's for me, it's about just staying focused on what we're doing as a team. I can't honestly tell you what anyone else does in that paddock. I couldn't care less whether whether Honda are trying to put the back wheel into the front wheel or you know try and reinvent the wheel. All I'm focused and concentrated on is what we're doing as a team to to give us the success, you know, because I think when you start worrying about what other people are doing, that's when you you lose the ball of what, what you're supposed to be doing yourself. So we seem quite good um, at staying focused. One final question that came in from a reader. Um, you and Ollie both race for the Vivaldi potato team. Yeah. Uh, uh, not the most beautiful of liveries, let's no. say. But what is your what has been your favourite livery that you've raced uh, and also um, that somebody else has raced? I mean, that can be in any, any championship. If I was to say any other livery, um, my trouble is, is you're, <laughs> you ask me a question and say, what's your favourite livery? And then I'm like, well, I like this one, but I like that one, but I like that one, I like that one as well. And it's like, well, I just list them all. But the two that probably do stand out is, I like the Rothmans Honda. Um, that was always a beautiful livery. But I also liked, oddly, I know it hadn't really changed much, but I liked the Repsol Mick Doohan livery on the 500. Just looked really good. So that would be my two favorite. And my livery that I have raced, it's never been that, um, that spectacular, really. I've... Um, I can't say, like you say, that the potato, the Vivaldi potato, got such a, 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 a almost media blast with it. It was, it was quite fun. So yeah, that was almost quite a, quite a good one. But the rest of them nowadays, which understandably is all, all predominantly about sponsors, um, exposing sponsors as, as much as we can, which is what, what makes our sport go around. Yeah, n none. I've never actually. Unfortunately, I've never been able to have some wild, like wild wacky colour scheme uh, for anything I've rode. Tommy, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I wish you the best of luck for the season. Yeah, and thank you. Social distancing prevents us from shaking hands. Yeah, I mean, so, well, <laughs> I'll chuck a bit of straw at you. Yeah, about? <laughs> that's, the new, that's how it's going to work from now on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Straw yeah. chucking. Yeah, Good no, man, thank thanks you. so much. Thanks for joining us. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Are you a pro at making banana cake? Well done. I like a nice car. I uh, surely you get you get staff discount on uh, Audis, don't you?